Hey, I just want to say a few quick words before I play the documentary short you're about to see. Um, I just want to thank everyone on the cross country team, uh, the coaches, of course, um, and we'll get to that in the documentary short, of course. I'm the director, I'm J.M. Richardson. And I also wanted to give a thank you to Jennifer Bevel, who was the producer and has been a big help with me in my dreams of becoming a filmmaker. So I hope you guys enjoy. And um, just thanks to everyone, my parents, my friends, everyone who helped out. And that's all. I uh, hope you enjoy the 32 mile goal. It's been a long day for y'all. I appreciate everybody staying till the end. Um, and thanks to everybody involved. Uh, it's been an awesome, awesome day. Um, at about 11.45 on March 31st, 2007, it was the first time I had ever realized that I could truly do anything that I wanted to. I was vomiting violently, so violently that the next morning, my stomach actually hurt worse than my arms. My crew, I could see about 200 yards away and they had a searchlight out and they were looking for me. And I, I could see them and I was yelling and they couldn't see me. And I had this split second moment. I was just like, you know what? This is done. I am over it. You see, about eight hours earlier, I had walked in the Gulf of Mexico in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, and I started swimming. And I had this goal, this idea that I could somehow change the world or improve places by this physical feat. I wanted to raise money for these uh, for kids programs on the Mississippi Gulf Coast after Katrina. And I'm at the halfway point and I had to choose, see it through or quit and forever regret it. Thankfully, I put my head down and I kept swimming. Nine hours later, I walked out of the water in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, forever changed. And this idea of 32 miles and the number two forever etched in my brain. Since that time, everything in my whole being has been revolved around healthy living. It's, I've even gone so far as to make this, I call it my filter. If I do X and it makes people more healthy, I do it. If it doesn't, I don't. And it has to do with setting these goals that challenge our why and that are based on our why. And for me, it's made all the difference in the world and it's probably the most empowering thing I've ever done. So I'm here at Cross Country. Oh, hey, Virginia. When we began training for our eventual Cross Country State Championship, we all started in the neighborhood Kenilworth. DC on the track, boy. Oftentimes during our runs, we'd stop at the halfway point to rest. It was here where we had a lot of fun passing around the camera. Hello, what's up, what's up camera, what's up doc? How are you doing today? Hello, how are we doing today? We just uh, reached the halfway point for our run. How do you feel? Strong, strong. How do you feel that we're halfway? 
Uh, I feel great. I feel like we can make it another halfway plus one more mile. How do we feel? I feel like I got ran over and backed over by a bus. Back, keep it up. Here. Back, back. Sir, I'm directing the documentary. Oh, we're not using my camera, though. we're using Clayton's. <laughs> After a run through the neighborhood, our coach would lead us through core in the parking lot by our cars. Afterwards, we'd go home and begin to rest for the next practice the morning after. Morning. This is what we're running. How much are we running, Blayton? Running six miles today. Nice, easy run. Getting that early work in, putting in those base miles. Yep. You know where it's at. There's nothing, no other place I'd rather be running six miles, six a.m. Can work for. We put that work in. No Let's better go. boys to be running with right now. Let's go. Absolutely. No better boys. Max. Uh, I don't even have an point. I just started running like yesterday. <laughs> Doing pretty good so far. Fair point. I don't even know what I'm running right now. Shout out to Ian Fellows, John Hall Hayes. Couldn't be here today. Don't know why shout they're out, not here. Shout out to Ian Chapman. Yeah, shot the Ian Chapman. He dropped out about a mile back. The summer training got harder and harder as time went on. Absolutely. The workouts became more intense, and it wasn't helped by the fact that the weather was extremely hot. With the school season starting soon, our coaches began to devise a plan for the school time practices. <laughs> My name is Jack Moran. I coach cross country and track and swimming. And as of late, I've been a strength and conditioning coach for the league soccer team and beach volleyball team. I'm not coach, bro. I can't. I can't. I'm a bad actor. I'm gonna have to put All right, here. All right, come on. I'm, I'm gonna give you three seconds of my okay, time. Ready? One. Two, three, rolling. There's too many cameras rolling now. Rolling. I'm stage right. And action. I'm Aaron and I coach cross country. Many of y'all may be saying, oh great, what's that mean for me? I've got to swim 32 miles. Great, thanks. That's doable. <laughs> but the reality is, I think that it's truly possible to do just about anything we can conceive if we base a goal around our why and what we believe in and what our drive is. With school starting just around the corner, it was time to move from the Kenilworth neighborhood into practices after school. Most times our practices would be held directly after school by the lakes near U High. But on occasion, Coach Pat would hold them at Highland Road Park. After our first practices, the team became ready for our first races for both the girls and the guys at Highland Road Park. Both the girls and the guys will be racing on the same course and hoping to defeat any other teams that came to the event. The girls race began at 7.15 and from there the sun began to beat down. The girls main rivals were two schools, one called Episcopal and the other called St. Joseph's Academy. Both of those schools came prepared with their varsity teams, but so did we. Our front runners included sophomore Caroline Kane leading amongst the girls. Following her were seniors Virginia Moore and Macy Michaela. And followed by them was sophomore Kate Williamson, sophomore Carly Shea, and junior Claire Herman. <laughs>
Once the girls had finished running, they began to rest and discuss their final times. As that was going on, the boys' varsity team was preparing and senior Ian Fellows passed out bibs to the team. Shortly after, the race began. On the course, all-star junior John Hall Hayes led the race with senior Blayton Bernard following him. Approaching the second mile, freshman Max Salakis began a pass-up competition with sophomore Anderson Karupala following close behind him. Soon after Anderson, sophomores Ian Chapman and Mercer Richardson worked their way up the course. total team ended up scoring very well at Highland and it looked like the shot at state was becoming brighter and brighter. We packed up our tent and equipment and very soon after, the team was excited for the next race at Highland Road Park. School of course was still going on. We were just able to practice after school and prepare for the next meet every weekend. What up? I'm Max. I'm the fastest freshman here in the oh. state. Yes, sir. Know my name, Max Lockies. <laughs> Pat had often left on business trips, and when he was out, Aaron and Jack were in charge of leading the team, along with the appointed cross-country captains. One of Pat's many goals was to have us work as a group, and thanks to a shared love of the sport, the cross-country team was very close, not just as a team, but as a group of friends. Everyone had their own running goal, but it didn't change the fact that we were still a team. For our next competition at Highland Road Park, the team put together posters for all the senior members to put up against our tent. Afterwards, many members had many things to say before the race began. My name is Jacob Blanchard. Uh, I'm a junior, and I'm going to try and get a PR. I'm Max Salakis, um, freshman here at U High. Trying to run, trying to break 18 today. It's my second three mile ever, you know. I'm excited, you know. Uh, the course, like weather today, it's perfect. Way better than last meet. Last meet, super muddy. I don't, I got like 1807. I just know I can break 18 today. Hopefully, Anderson can break 18 too, you know. Nice, nice. Um, we're, we're gonna be working together or racing each other. I'm Anderson, uh, I'm a sophomore. Ah, ah, he's a junior. Um, hopefully, uh, we aspire to be like him. You know, uh, we're hoping for a great race, great turnout today. You know, it's gonna be good. Facts, 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 facts. You ready to run today? Yes, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it fast. It's a good way to think about it. IPR. That'd be nice. It's a good way to think about it. I'm gonna, like my legs. They're just, let me demonstrate. They're gonna be going like, like this. You know, and they're just gonna be moving. And I'm going to be just going. It's going to be quick. Nice, man. Nice, man. I yeah. like it. Uh, hi, my name is Ian Chapman, and I'm a sophomore at U High. And today, oh, I'm just going to try and run fast. You know, I have no goal set in mind. I'm just going to run fast. And we'll see how that works out. And you can catch up with me after to see how it turns out. After the statements, the runners ran. And before you know it, the races were over, and it was time to see what was next for our team. Coach Pat had eventually announced to us that a select group of runners based on their times would be going to the Division III Louisiana State Championship. The team was excited and thankful for the opportunity to run at State, but also very nervous for the event. What I needed was a goal, and I needed something to kind of lift me up to realign what I was about. And for me, that turned in to 32 miles. So a lot of us have already have heard of this before. B-H-A-G, B-H-A-G. Big, hairy, audacious goal. Let me be the, this will be my only other presentation slide of the night, and I'm gonna put a line through that. When I hear big and hairy, my brain shuts off, thinks about some big, hairy guy, and I am no longer motivated. So for me, I've redefined this as 32 miles. 
But what both of those things have in common is this. Those types of goals, these self-proclaiming type of goals are the ones that are the, in the back of your mind. They're, they're nagging. They're like, man, I, I bet I could do this. But they, more importantly, they speak to what we're about. And these 32-mile goals, I think, that can truly align your life. There's two ways that I think, two things that have to happen to do that. You have to build it correctly, and then you have to figure out how you can execute it. The team prepared and lined up for the inevitable state run that was about to happen. Schools from around Louisiana were preparing for this competition, and all of them wanted the grand prize of winning the first place award. With the race almost starting, many members said their final statements before the end of the cross country season. Let's go! Lock it in, hey. This might come back to bite me. You gotta lock it the f in, though. Lock it the f in. Damn right. You might have to bleep all that out. The time for racing had begun, and everyone's mind was focused on the field ahead. At that time, the only thing separating the runners from their race was one shot in the air. Let's go, Cobb! Let's go, Let's go Cobb! When I wake up, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who wakes up next to you. What do you think of the race so far? Going really great. Let's go. And who goes along with you? If I get drunk, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who gets drunk next to you. To everyone's delight, the Cubs were winning. Blayton Bernard came in first place, John Hall came in fourth, and all the other Cubs were having excellent races passing up as many teams as possible. A lot of you are saying, great, that's goal setting 101. I've read it in every book. I appreciate that. Thank you for reviewing that for the group. But what's the difference? And the difference is the drive and the why. If you base a goal upon your drive and your why, you will cement a foundation that you can build your whole entire life on. Your first one, you may not get it. And your second one, you may not exactly know your why, but if that's what you try to base it on, you will be forever enriched. Your spirit, your work, your family, your friends, and everyone around you will also be enriched for this. And that's why for me, I feel that one goal like this can truly align your life. So again, as we finish this fantastic night, I challenge each and every one of you to question yourself and say, hey, what is my why? What kind of goal can I send? And what'll be your 32 miles? Thank you.